Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with Swedish meatballs. That's right, everything I learned about Swedish cuisine I learned on the Muppets. And while I really enjoyed the chef on there, you have to admit the recipe instructions were not that clear. So I kind of had to figure this recipe out for myself. Of course, I also did like 15, 20 minutes of extensive research online. And this is what I came up with. So check it out. We're going to start with a large skillet on medium heat with a little bit of butter in there. I'm going to add a half of a finely chopped onion with a little pinch of salt. And we're going to sweat that for about six, seven minutes just until they turn translucent. You know the drill. And by the way, do not wash this pan once the onions are done. We're going to make the sauce in this pan and eventually finish the meatballs right in the same skillet. Okay. So after about six minutes, my onions look like that. I dumped them into a metal bowl and that's where we're going to make our Swedish meatball mixture. So we're going to pour in some milk, two large eggs, and some plain breadcrumbs. I'm going to give that a mix. By the way, the culinary term for that is slurry. I'm not sure what that is in Swedish, but I'm assuming it has way more consonants. And once that's mixed, we're going to start adding our spices and seasonings. So I'm going to go with some freshly ground nutmeg, some allspice. Please do not substitute partial spice. Some freshly ground black pepper, and of course salt. And then we're going to give that a mix. And I'm feeling like I forgot something. Oh yeah, that's right. A little bit of cayenne. And at that point, we are ready for the meat. Traditionally, this is done with half beef and half pork. Unfortunately, I decided to use a lean beef and an even leaner ground pork. That was 95% lean pork, which doesn't make the tenderest meatballs. I mean, the reason you're adding the pork is for that extra fat, that extra richness, that extra juiciness. So if you use pork that's actually leaner than the beef, it doesn't make much sense. I'm actually still a little upset about it. But anyway, we're going to mix that up. I'm going to use the old holy wooden spatula. And whenever I use this, I get so many emails and comments. What's up with the holy spatula? It really is a great question and a fascinating story. All right. So mix that well. And then we're going to cover that with plastic and refrigerate that for at least an hour before we start forming our meatballs. We want to make sure those breadcrumbs are fully hydrated and all those flavors meld together. So throw that in the fridge. And in the meantime, we can make our sauce. So we're going to go back to that same pan we did the onions in. We're going to melt some more butter and we're going to toss in some white all-purpose flour because we're making a roux. That's right. They have roux in Sweden. So over medium heat, stir that flour into that butter. And we're going to cook that for about four or five minutes until it looks something like that. Kind of a golden light brown roux. You don't have to go too long, but you do want to take the raw edge off that flour. And at that point, we're going to whisk in our beef stock or beef broth. And we like to go a little bit slow at the beginning. So splash some in, whisk it in, splash a little more in, whisk it in. And when about half of it's in and it looks like that, you can just dump it all. Now at this point, I want you to turn the heat up to medium high. We're going to add a splash of cream. Ooh, cool shape. It looks like that thing in that movie. So we're going to whisk in the cream. And over medium high heat, we're going to bring this up to a simmer. Now while that's happening, I'm going to season it up with a little bit of black pepper, a little bit of salt and sugar. That's right. A little touch of sugar and a few drops of Worcestershire sauce. And all we're going to do when that comes up to a simmer is watch it, stir it once in a while. And we're just going to simmer that for maybe six, seven minutes until it thickens slightly. And we are going to simmer the meatballs in that sauce to finish, so it will thicken up a little bit at that point. So you do not need to reduce this way down at this point. That's fine. Just like that, we're going to turn that off, and it's on to the meatball formation. So pull your meatball mixture out of the fridge. I'm going to portion these up in one-ounce balls. You know I like to use my sorbet scoop for this, so they all come out the same size. But you do that any way you want. You are, of course, the boss of, well, you know. Now, once those are scooped, you're also going to want to roll these. Dip your hands in some cold water and roll those nice and smooth. You know we've done no-roll meatball recipes before, but here with the Swedish meatball, they generally are formed into nice smooth balls. So that's what we're going to do. And I'm using a foil-lined sheet pan with a little bit of oil on it. And once all your meatballs are scooped and rolled, they're ready for the oven. Now, traditionally, these are fried in a pan on the stove, and then you make the sauce in that pan. That makes a huge mess. So I do it in the oven. So we're going to throw that in a preheated 425 degree oven for about 20 minutes until they're browned. At that point, we're going to spatulate those into the pan, turn the heat back on to medium low, and simply simmer those Swedish meatballs in that amazing beefy creamy sauce until it's the perfect consistency. All right, not too thick, not too thin. You know how I like it. Perfect. So just simmer that on medium low until it looks like that. Of course, as they say in Sweden, please taste and adjust for seasoning. And that's it, Swedish meatballs. 
So throw those on a warm plate, spoon over that amazing sauce. So beautiful. I serve mine with some buttered boiled potatoes and dill. And of course, the required and absolutely necessary lingonberry sauce. You can find that in the Swedish aisle of your local grocery store. If you can't find that, any kind of berry fruit jam should work. But that little bit of sweet garnish is just really key for this recipe, in my opinion. And that's coming from someone that's made this, you know, like once. All right. And here as I cut into this, you can see it doesn't look or seem that tender. But that's, again, because I use 95% lean meat, which is dumb. So if you do this recipe and you use regular ground beef and regular ground pork that has like 25% fat content, these are going to be so much better than mine. And these were good. Don't get me wrong but they could have been better with a little more fat. And are they gonna be as good as the ones at that large Swedish put it together yourself furniture store? I don't know about that, but they will be easier to put together than that bookcase. Why do I have parts left over? But anyway, they really, really were delicious. So I hope you give them a try. Head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.